Hey everybody, it's Strict9 with Strict9GP, and I'm back with another episode of my Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2020 playthrough. Uh, we're just now at the start of the season for the uh, Austin P. Governors. This is the 2021-2022 season. Um, we don't have a game today. It's like November 15th, but we will in this episode. That'll be the thing I do. Uh, but um, I appreciate the comments. There was some good stuff uh, from that last episode. I know I'm struggling with recruiting and uh, getting everything in line there and still struggling. I'm just hoping that as the season goes on, I mean, we got, what is it, until March, I think, is when it, recruiting finally ends. So I'm hoping that sooner or later I'm going to get the team that I want, some recruits that I, I'll be able to work with, you know, uh, coming into next year. It's about the same as it was, though. I've got three offers out there already for a shooting guard, a power forward, a small forward. I think only the small forward. No, he's not. Uh, we're not his top school. I think Lewis Morton, we might still be his top school. He's the uh, power forward. A couple things I like about him. I like his. Uh, I, I like his numbers from high school, but I also like... One of the things that I think I noticed in um, previous seasons is when they start, um, when you start seeing the green here in this parentheses, I think that means that they're playing better than they're, or, or they're, they're scouting better than they were originally. So they're moving up in positions. I'm hoping that's what it means anyway. So this could be, <clears throat> excuse me, this could be a positive for him. Um, and, you know, some of this, um, some of his ratings look really good. I mean, he's he's a C overall. I think that's what, you know, B, C are, are about at my limit, I think, on this. But um, I'd be happy to get him. Curtis Riley, a shooting guard. He's a good outside shooter, good at athleticism. We're still just fifth on his list. So, I, you know, I'm hoping that <clears throat> by doing some of these guys early, um, I'll know early whether they're going to uh, – sign with this or go to another team and I'm also hoping that you know their their first and second third fourth choices whatever the case may be um, doesn't offer them a scholarship so they'll be available and I'll just be able to snatch them that way but um, I'm, I'm not gonna panic too much yet um, recruiting takes place all throughout the season so I'm going to keep at it and just keep focusing on the players that I've targeted and any other players that come up, you know, like this guy out of Virginia. He came up uh, showing interest. He's we're third on his list. And I do need a, a small forward. You know, this guy might be somebody I can uh, get lucky with and, and bring on to the team. He's also a, a good outside shooter, but he's good inside and outside, rated high at scoring so he would be a good pick if we could get him but I'm going to take a look at the de the depth chart that I have and then we'll play out a game and see what we're going to look at it's not going to be a big challenge I'm hoping but it is going to be a road game um, so maybe we'll we'll start out strong here but um, I'm staying with the same strategy as last year because I do have some carryovers. Uh, I'm going to use motion and shuffle a lot, five out for hopefully that'll help the um, uh, some of the guards on the team. Um, if you look at the five out offense, the way it's described, it's uh, you know it's it's mo most of the time it's behind behind the arc. Uh, you don't get a lot of offensive rebound chances, so that could be a, a problem. I may lower that one as we go through, but for, for the most part, I'm going to keep it the way it was last year. Uh, hopefully, some of the returning guys will be a little bit more proficient in this offense, and we'll have some luck. But on the depth chart, uh, it, it may change as we go along. I'm sure it will, but uh, McMillian, who was a freshman last year, Rated just two stars, but a three and a half potential. He's got good ball handling and scoring uh, potential, uh, passing potential for sure. I'm just going to go with him, even though Cunningham might be better. He's a senior. Uh, he might be better rated at a couple things. Not many, though, to be honest. Maybe just outside shooting and passing. Uh, 
maybe a little bit better defender, but he's a senior and, you know, a two star with two and a half potential. He's not really, you know, he's not a great starter anyway. Um, he doesn't care about play time, so I don't think his, um, the relationship would suffer too much. So I'm going to give him a million, a lot of time here and hopefully he'll, he'll build into a, a good point guard. But I guess the big thing is Mike or, um, yeah, Mike Ivory, who had some potential from from last year, uh, the coach who was in charge of scouting, I think had this guy to three and a half potential. He's just really um, not the same player with the new scouting uh, that I have, and I don't think he's really good enough to to be a um, point guard anymore. And so I'm moving him uh, to, to off the off the bench as a shooting guard and. We'll see how he does. I mean, he's still got some good outside shooting, uh, but that's you know that's about it. He's rated low as a scorer. Um, he's below average in just about every defensive category. Uh, so I know he he's already struggling or has been struggling in the past with the coach relationship. I don't think it's going to get any better because he's just not going to be the player I need him to be. But then moving to um, so. Bottom line on that, a point guard is going to be really thin if I don't, if I'm not able to throw some of these guys in the mix and uh, get them some play time. And I, and this will change, I'm sure, after the first. I want to give it a few games anyway, and I, I might try to add some of these other guys in the mix, even the walk ons. But right now, this is what I'm going with. Um, so I've got McMillian for 30 minutes, I've got Jensen. Another freshman recruit from uh, last season. He's a sophomore now. Four-star potential. Great outside shooter. A good free throw shooter. He's rated potentially he's going to be above average scorer. Um, rebounding numbers. You know, there's potential for this guy all up and down the line. Maybe the only thing, ball handling and inside shooting, which you don't really care too much about for a uh, shooting guard, or I wouldn't necessarily. Um He's got really good potential, so hopefully he lives up to it with some play time. He's really wanting it. Uh, he says he – well, no, he, he doesn't care about play time. So I thought he was one of those that I was having relationship problems with, but we'll see. Uh, I've got off the bench. I've got uh, – right now uh, I am putting Ivory, like I said, and I may have to adjust, you know, Cunningham – Marshak, those guys might have to get some time at, at shooting guard as well because um, we're really thin unless I start using these walk-ons, and I don't want to do that. Jepson's got the lock on small forward. He's the best player on the team, um, really the best returning player. You know, he had a decent year last year. Good outside shooter, um, pretty decent free throw shooter. All, and he's a great rebounder too from that position. And then Laws is going to get the start at power four, but I'm giving um, Ike King, who is a recruit, I'm going to give him quite a bit of play time. He's wanting it. He expects starter minutes. I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, but he is um, – I'm giving him 12 minutes right now. I, I Unless he just tanks, I'm going to probably – improved that but the other thing is Harriman who is a red shirt uh, freshman from uh, recruiting I did last year he's also got good potential and <clears throat> I want to I don't want to remove him from the mix so um, we'll see how those two play out we'll see how Laws who has been a bench player his whole time that I've had him um, I'm going to see how he does at that power forward position before I make too many movements. And then center, I had a real, I had some really big questions about. Um, Holland is another senior who's going away, of course, after this year. Um, to be honest, to be outside of rebounding, blocking, um, and free throw shooting, he doesn't bring you much. And I've got him as the starter right now, but only with 18 minutes. And I'm bringing in Travis Hart. Uh, who's also a two-star, and he's got a little bit better uh, size, I think. But I think his ratings are a little bit better. Uh, the only thing you'd struggle with with him would be free throw shooting. But I'm still, I'm still thinking that Hart's going to be 
maybe the future starter, although Mallet um, has some really good upside too. So center, it's those those three guys are, are going to be uh, shuffled around. I think as the season goes on, if Mallet looks good, he might be getting more time. I think right now. He wants solid minutes, so I can't afford to, to let him go at the expense of a, a really below average senior is the way I look at it. So I got to do I got to do something to keep those guys happy, I think. So uh, and, and Mallet has the size advantage. He's the, the biggest, you know, height anyway. He's the biggest one I got. And he's he's got really the best potential ratings of any of the um, centers. But um uh, He's just not rated as well as good enough now. I don't think to handle the starting job. So we'll we'll see. It's going to be as much as I did not think it would be this way. I think it's going to be a transition year. I mean, I thought I was going to come into this year with um, McKinnis still on the team, and I thought I was going to be seeing you know some some development from guys like I thought Holland after playing as much as he did last year would develop a little bit. Uh, fortunately, Mallet did, but Holland didn't. And I thought, you know, I thought the point guard and, and uh, power forward situation would be a little bit better, but it's not. So I, I do think this is a transition year, unfortunately. And I don't know, you know, I've said before, my plan is to go out after this season, get a better, uh, a job at a better prestige conference. But, um, it may be hard to do. Uh, it really might be hard to do coming uh, right now. I mean, I might have best thing I might could hope for is kind of like a, you know, a lateral type move uh, into another two star or around the two star prestige conference and team. And I, uh, I was hoping not to do that, but hey, we'll see what happens. So let's go ahead and look at the dashboard. We're going to go ahead and start sending some games out. Um, Belmont, they're starting out against Buffalo, who we play later in the year. Think about it. I'm noticing about our schedule. I've, I, I said last episode, it's it's uh, weighted so heavily against us home and away. I mean, uh, of the 11 non-conference games we got, um, I think seven of them are on the road. So that's going to be really tough uh, to uh, to overcome. And look at this Buffalo big win against uh, Belmont so not a good start for Belmont they usually do uh, really well non-conference and uh, I'm kind of wondering too I mean how is Belmont looking I mean are they in a transition year too let me take a look yeah they're, they're struggling a little bit I mean they've got Tony Weber who's been one of their better players strong sen senior center they got a good power forward here in Gibson, but they're um, they're also hurting across the board. So that might be well good for us. You know, depends on how the other team. I guess another team to look at too. Tennessee Tech was strong last year. They're pretty strong again in a way. Um, that's some balance there between. Well, a lot of it's in their forwards though. They, yeah, they got some. They got some opportunities to improve. Uh, Tennessee State, how are they looking? About the same as we are. Uh, I think Southeast Missouri State, they had a good run last year. They got a, yeah, they got about a similar looking uh, makeup on their team. Murray State, really looking pretty rough. And um, who was another? Eastern Illinois was a, a tough team last year. They're struggling looks like from their ratings I'm looking this is what I'm looking at by the way I know I'm going through it quick quick and how about Eastern Kentucky they got a couple guys who, who look pretty good um, uh, whether that whether that'll play out in our favor or not I don't know but uh, looks like we might be pretty competitive with some of these teams so uh, got some games here looks like Florida Murray State that's probably the toughest matchup I'm seeing here so let's see what what this day brings uh, 
All right, so this is our game. Let me go back and see who won. Oh, Florida, big game, win over Murray State. But Jacksonville, Tennessee Tech, close close games, but uh, Jacksonville State won, Tennessee Tech lost to Robert Morris. Tennessee State, big win over Sacred Heart. Um, we're playing Grand Canyon on the road. I think our, our scout has us just barely beating them. And I'm going to look at the scouting report and see how it looks. Um, so, no, Grand Canyon, 51 to 49. Holy cow. Uh, so they have the advantage at point guard. We have the advantage at small forward and off the bench. So I'll probably use my uh, outside focus for now. Um, but... I don't know. We might could do, use more of a balance type approach and uh, go inside and outside with them and, and have some luck. But uh, without Jensen or without McKinnis on this team, you know, we're not the shooting team that we were. That's the that's the struggle that I guess I'm having. Uh, they've got three seniors, a freshman and junior. We got three seniors, um, a couple sophomores. So I'm going to slow the pace down like I usually do, I try to crash the boards a little bit more. Uh, defensive intensity, I'm going to tick it up just a little bit. Um, I'm going to favor outside for now and see how we start. And we miss our first three-point attempt. They do too. And uh, struggling with shooting early. <laughs> We're 0 for 3. Finally get one. I don't know if it's a layup or a dunk. And uh, first foul of the game on us, and it's going to be a shooting foul. And he makes them both. Don't want to lose it at the free throw line. Good rebound and put put in there by Laws. And we steal the ball, and they steal it back. And pass deflected out of bounds. And another foul. Uh, so we're... You give them two shooting fouls, and they're four for four from the line. And we are really having a hard time with shooting. Two for seven. And they hit uh, traveling Greg Laws. Uh, good move there from McMillian, his first two points. And that th that's going to be another foul. So we're up to three fouls to their none. But he misses the first one, makes the second one. It's a 7-6 game. And we draw our first foul, and it's Jepson. Uh, who, he's got two points so far. He makes them both. We're back on top, 8-7. To and another foul. That's Jepson. So we're four fouls to their one. And another one. Come on. Um, and that's another shooting foul. Sometimes I don't know how to go. I mean, do you do you turn down the defensive intensity to keep away from the fouls, or do you just turn it all the way up because you're going to get the fouls anyway? I don't know what, what the answer is. And uh, I think they're out-rebounding us quite a bit right now. It's still just a one-point game. Ah, big three-pointer, though, that... That's the first three-pointer of the game for either team. Uh, that's the sec. No, that was a, a just a two. So Jensen misses but draws the foul. And he misses the first one, makes the second one. It's a five-point game. Uh, we're still struggling to shoot. I'm gonna I'm gonna go for a balance just to see if we can get more inside. And I'm going to turn the intensity down a little bit, but uh, crashing boards up a little bit. I mean, they're not shooting that well either. They're 4 for 10, and <clears throat> right away we get a foul. So that's what I'm saying. I mean, if you're going to foul anyway, uh, you might as well have that intensity pretty high. Ah, oh, man, 1911. And we finally hit a three-pointer. I don't know. That was Marshak off the bench. A little back and forth going on right now, but uh, they're up by eight. So they're hitting some three-pointers. They're three for five. And uh, Cunningham coming off the bench, he's going to the line, and he misses the first uh, free throw. Seven-point game. 
Mm. We're still struggling this, the shoot. And Mike Ivory called for the foul, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm turning it all the way up because I know it risks uh, getting in the free throw shoot. Not all the way up, but I'm turning it up. You risk uh, uh, foul trouble, but we're going to be in foul trouble anyway, I think. So I want that intensity to be pretty high. Uh, they're up by 11. That's their biggest lead. Not much going our way, although Jensen makes a shot, draws a foul, and makes the free throw. So back within eight. <clears throat> Looks like Jepson, our leading scorer, was six points. I expected him to be the leading scorer. Um, <clears throat> man, they're really handling us easily. <clears throat> that was a big three-pointer, though, from uh, McMillian. They're out-rebounding us, 14-8. Um, to eight. Turnovers, 5-4. to four. Uh, And we, Jepson just committed another foul. 14 down. I think this is going to be a big loss because we're just uh, as sad as it may seem, we're not matched up well against these guys. <clears throat> and we're getting way too many fouls. Uh, we're up to nine right now. But I, I just, I'm going to go all out for the rest of the game. I don't think we got a chance if we don't have that intensity up. Nothing else that'll get some young guys off the bench, some play time. We're really struggling shooting. Eight for 26. <clears throat> Man, really struggling uh, shooting. Jensen is one for eight. So that's going to tell you how much, how, how badly I'm, I'm going to miss uh, McKinnis. McKinnis could be streaky, but. <clears throat> you know, he would he would have games where he'd make eight, nine baskets, I think. And and it's hard to – and there was a shot clock violation. They are really running all over us. It, it, it would be hard to replace that, I knew. But um, a couple good sequences there, but we're still down by 15. Another foul. And they foul on them. They're just at six team fouls. Um, I, I notice, you know, this is just hopefully it doesn't sound like a petty rant, but I do think there's coding in here that, uh, if not coding, I don't know what it could be, but I do think that a lot of cases the home team gets less foul, fouls than the away team. That's just my observation. Um, I mean, this is just one instance, but. I feel like in, in the two seasons I played, the, and I play them all out, I don't sim them, uh, I do see uh, foul trouble usually happens against, even in our favor. I mean, when we're home, we usually don't draw as many fouls. I don't know if that's the way it goes in real life or not, but it's good and bad, you know. When we're, we're home, it, it helps, I guess. But uh, And I'm going to, let's, let's see if we can call a play here. I haven't been paying much attention. We're time. We got timeout. No. Uh, uh, can I call a timeout here? Uh, let's just call a timeout. All right. Let's see if I can call a th set play. Uh, we got some tired guys here too. That's that's one of the things I'm going to have to take a, a look at. Like Harriman's only played three minutes. Mallet five minutes. That's not too bad. But some of these guys are going to really get tired, uh, keeping them, their minutes high. Like right now, Hart, who's in as a power forward. Uh, I think that is something I had used, decided to use him for. But we got Kellogg um, coming off the bench. He's one of the walk-ons. So let's choose a three-pointer. And is Marshak out there? He's out there. Ivory... I think, yeah, I don't need him at point guard. Holland, uh, Hart, Kellogg is his shooting guard. I don't really, is that the best I can do? Hmm. Maybe maybe I'll try for Marshak. His, his outside shooting is okay. So let's have the ball handler 
is going to be Cunningham. The shooter is going to be Marshak. And let's see what happens here. Don't do these too often, but maybe we've got an opportunity here. And it didn't work. All right, so 15-point um, deficit at the half. Wow. I mean, I wasn't... I don't know what I really thought, thought going into this game, but I, I thought we'd play better than this. Um, this is scary <laughs> to me. Grand Canyon Antelopes are beating us by 15 at home, or at, uh, at their home. Uh, looking individually here, I mean, Laws, just a couple points, but some rebounds in the mix. Jepson, six rebounds, six points. He's the best player on the, on the court for us by far. Holland has not looked great at center. McMillian, seven points, uh, but just one assist. Jensen, now the shooting guard, one for eight <clears throat> in field goal attempts. Uh, just four points. That's not gonna. That's not gonna cut it. Um, and then off the bench, Marshak has looked good, and Marshak is rated pretty good f from this new coach who's who's doing the scouting now. He may be somebody I need to get some more point uh, time to. I've even thought that he might be someone I can uh, use at shooting guard as well. So uh, may have to do that. But the the big trouble here: ten for thirty-two shooting, two for twelve, and three pointers. Not good. They're out rebounding us. It's we've kind of closed the gap, but um, steals, even turnovers, uh, close. But we're we have more turnovers, and then fouls are starting to get close, ten to eight. These numbers are, are balanced, but um, we have never led. We led by well outside of the first part of the game. Let's uh, let's keep what we got, but I'm going to go back to favoring outside for a little bit, and I'm going to keep that intensity high. Uh, like I say, we'll get in foul trouble. It'll give some some of the younger players play time. That's that's about the only thing I could say on that about that. And then that was Holland right away doing a three pointer. He he does that sometimes, and you can actually I I could call the guy and tell him not to do the three pointers, but you know what the heck? And now Jepson, three fouls on him. I mean, that's not the one I wanted to see in foul trouble. And another foul on Holland, but he, this is his first. And they throw it away. So I'm hoping that pressure is getting to him a little bit. Man, Jensen, one for ten in shooting. And then he's called for a foul on the other end. It's going to be a real big learning uh, year I would imagine for a lot of guys on this team now he's got his third foul again I don't really care I don't think we're gonna I don't think we're gonna stay with this team if we don't have that intensity high and um, it's another defensive foul we're down by 15 oh my gosh he, he, he got the rebound and put it back but that was uh, Law's uh, missing an easy layup looks like a three-pointer would be nice or anything mark cunningham misses the shot but draws the foul we are five to one in fouls in this half and cunningham that's what i'm talking about he is not uh, i was hoping that he would get some development last year but he's a senior i don't think he improved at all last year and uh that's a shame because you know, it would have been nice if he would have been able to just take over the point guard one more year and, and give me time to develop the other guys, but that's not going to happen. And we're, hey, we're within 10 all of a sudden. Uh, but then I spoke and they, they got one. It's a 12 point game, but they throw it away. And if we could shoot, we'd be, I think it would be a lot better. We have had 44 attempts to their 34, 35. If we could just hit some of these baskets, man, the shooting is terrible. Um, I mean, we're hitting 28%. I mean, this is just, I mean, we're not, we're not even going to be in the game shooting like that. Jensen's still struggling one for 10. Look at that. I mean, two for 16 and free throws. Um, 
I can't. Yeah, that was our six-team foul. Um, uh, Jepson, thankfully we got Jepson. He makes a point, draws a foul, or makes a basket. But he misses the free throw. And another foul. Jensen is fourth. I, I just don't care at the, at the moment. I mean, if we... I mean, I'm just going to call a... a Full timeout if we score. What is? It? And we're not. We're down by 19 again after being down by 10. And another foul uh, that was on King. King is getting some play time. Uh, I'd like to see him get a whole lot more play time, honestly. In this game, while we got him, Mike Mallett misses the shot, draws the foul. Just three team fouls on them. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, Ten minutes left. I mean, they're not even going to get in foul trouble probably in the second half. And uh, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna see if motivating and motivating this team will get them to. I, I really want to motivate Jensen. Is who I want to motivate. So. He's not listening. I should have screamed at him. Maybe that would have got his attention. But let's go. Hey, a nice three-pointer there from Jepson. He's up to 11 points. I think he's easily going to be scoring leader uh, this year. If, you know, this game, but probably this year as well. I cannot believe we're shooting 30%. Um, and that was Cunningham thro throwing it away. I mean, that's the kind of play uh, I, I usually got from that guy at point guard. They're up by 17 again. And Marshak uh, hit just his first foul. Oh, another three-pointer. That's Marshak. And that's what I'm saying. Marshak might be a good enough shooter that he can play so much uh, shooting guard and, and, and help us out there in, for the depth. And Cunningham called for his third foul. So we're in the bonus by, I'm sure, a lot. And we throw it away. That was Travis Hart. He's gotten four rebounds, three points. And uh, Harriman getting some play time. It's his first time on the floor. I thought I had him scheduled to play a little bit more. And Cunningham again throws it away. Jeez. If I had better depth at uh, point guard, you know, or another, like, um, young guy who's got some potential, I, I would hardly even play Cunningham. But with Ivory's potential going down so bad, his ratings going down so bad with the new scout, our coach uh, in scouting, I uh, I have to I have to use him. I can't just throw away every game. And I tell you, Holland uh, up to nine points. He is he's probably going to be the better scoring center for now inside of any of the guys I've got. Man, they're back up to 21. This is kind of embarrassing, I think. I don't, I'm don't. i not familiar with Grand Canyon. I'm not sure what uh, conference they're in, but if we can't be competitive against this team, I don't think we got much chance. The only good thing I liked was when I was looking at the uh, teams you know, down the line, it looks like in terms of just potential and overall ratings, you know, we're, we're maybe matched up pretty good. They're about 25. I mean, they have literally run away with this. Uh, and, and we're 19 for 59. If we, if we were just below, just a little bit below 50% shooting, we would be close in this game, if not winning this game. And Mallet misses both. We're 50% on free throws. And that's how it ends. 27 point loss. 
Um, I'm kind of stunned by that. So, um, I think, you know, in all honesty, uh, as much as I hate to say it, I think that's what we're looking at this year. I mean, we may struggle to win 10 games. Um, I just, um, I just don't have, um, the depth now because of my struggles with recruiting I don't have the depth to really stay um, stay competitive, especially on this out-of-conference schedule. I mean, if this is the way we open up, uh, we may have a tr tough time winning, I don't know, three, three out of the 11 games. But let's, let's take a look individually and see what happened. I mean, with the intensity up the whole game, the whole half um, – we got the scoring back in line in terms of, you know, we held them to 35 in the second half. I know we had to go through a lot of fouls to, to do that, so I don't want to do that every game, obviously, but we just we scored less in the second half than we did the first half, just 23 points. That shooting was horrendous, 19 for 60, um, and then 50% at the free throw line. Rebounds, they were 42 to 29. Um Gosh, turnovers, we had 18, they had 16. That was kind of close. Fouls, 24 to 12. I mean, that was not even close. And again, I know that was because of the way I had the intensity up, but I do think there is some home court advantage there uh, sometimes. But individually, uh, laws did not look good scoring-wise. Um, just four points. But when he was out there, I mean, the team – Responded. I mean, plus plus two, so four rebounds and assists. Still, he's a good, he's well rounded. Even though his ratings don't show it, um, it's going to be interesting, I guess, if if King makes any kind of development, Harriman, if those guys show anything at power forward as the year goes on. Jeff's in the leading score, but really not by much. And this is where he averaged last year. He was uh, just over ten points a game. And scoring, but he is so well rounded. Uh, seven rebounds, two steals, two blocks. Um, had he not gotten in foul trouble, he would have had more points. He would have probably pushed close to 20, probably 15, 16 or so points. Holland didn't look too bad, uh, but I'd like more rebounds and blocks. And, you know, I'd like what you want to see from a center defensively. I don't really see that from him. McMillian, his first true start as a point guard was um, really underwhelming. Uh, of the starters, you know, him and Jensen were negative 15. He scored seven points, but just two assists, a steal. Uh, and that's 30 minutes. He's, he played more than anybody on the on the court and, and uh, didn't look great. And then Jensen, of course, I'm just hoping that it's going to take a few games to get him where he needs to be, but four points on a one for ten shooting, not good. Off the bench, I, I did like Marshak the way he looked, so he's got a chance, I think, get more play time. Uh, Mallet was really not that great. Hart and Mallet weren't that great off the bench. Um, I did like Hart, you know, the five rebounds. He, I think he, no, Jepson uh, led the team in rebounds, but. Didn't see a whole lot there either. And uh, Ike King, he got 13 minutes. I didn't think he got that much. No points, a couple rebounds, an assist. Uh, boy. <laughs> I know it's his first game. Hey, we'll see how it goes. Harriman was really not that much either. Uh, so a lot of work to do, I guess. And where was... Uh, yeah, that, that's it. I mean, the, the bottom three guys are, are, are walk-ons. All right, so um, I'm just gonna have to grin and bear it. I think we're we're gonna be really up for some tough losses this year. So the rest of the the conference here didn't look all that good either. I mean, Stony Brook beat Southeast Missouri State. Eastern Illinois lost to Duquesne, big 18 points. Uh, Eastern Kentucky, a big upset in my opinion, over Memphis, 54-51 on the road. Moorhead State won against Holy Cross. Uh, Troy beat Tennessee Martin. So in terms of 
the way we're all playing. Um, Moorhead State looking pretty good. Eastern Kentucky, Jacksonville State, Tennessee State. Those are the only teams with wins. Uh, SIU, Edwardsville hasn't played yet. So, man, I just hope that that's you're going to give us some chance when we get to the to the uh, <clears throat> conference schedule. Our next game is against Cal State Bakersfield, again on the road. It's going to be tough. I mean, five away games to start. That's just crazy to me. But that's the way the schedule came came down. I was hoping n- next year I would probably, for this team, put us in an easier schedule, but it didn't happen this year. Uh, one thing I want to do before I close out this episode is I'm going to look. I didn't look at it. Uh, but I was going to look at how the polls are for this season, see what what it kind of looks like. I mean, we got, um, I think it was Arkansas who won last year. I don't even see them. Am I missing them? Yeah, they're not even in the, the polls so far. you got Michigan State, Kansas, Kentucky, Wisconsin, Notre Dame pretty high. I don't think I've seen them that high in this playthrough, but I do not see Arkansas. So that's crazy. Are they even here? Nope. Um just thought I would take a look at that just to see if anything's kind of changed. But uh, some new teams, but not many new teams. Uh, the only new, I guess, would be how high they've got Michigan State this year. But uh, I know for us, RPI, where where is that? It's not ranked yet. It'll take it. No, two, 232. <laughs> Whew. So I, I was going to check um, Grand Canyon. I wonder, I don't even know what conference they would be in. What it shows here. I guess I could find it if I look through. Well, look at it this way. Grand Canyon. Sounds like they would be in a, yeah, Western Athletic. So the Western Athletic Conference, we're playing a couple couple teams from there. Cal State Bakersfield is in that conference, so uh, man, that's not a very tough looking conference, but Kansas City Kangaroos, uh, hmm. in terms of prestige, that's a way lower prestige team and um, conference. That's sad. That's sad that we lost that way against them. How is Cal State Bakersfield? Are they even any better? They're a better team, so we may have a t- tougher time beating them. But uh, I'll probably play through that offline. I'll get through. Um, I will probably get through the non-conference schedule in a couple episodes because I think, especially this year, I don't know how much time I want to give it because uh, I think we're just not going to have much luck. I might. Might come back for one of these home games, maybe maybe even all the way down here to San Francisco Dines. That might be the next episode, just to go through and, and by that time we'll know a little bit better about what kind of team we got. Uh, but as always, I really appreciate the support. I hope you're still liking the series. Um, just This is going to be a tough, challenging year in so many ways, and I just hope we get through it okay. Uh, But I will see you next episode. Thanks for watching.